Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hello everyone. Well, this week we're on our way back to Brisbane. We told you at the end of our Burke episode that we had to go back in for some warranty repairs. So we're going to pick up on an old campground and we're going to go and find somewhere new. It should be a great adventure. So go and grab yourself a cold drink, get your feet up for the next 20 minutes or so and come and join the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? As we said at the start of the episode, we have to go back to Brisbane um, to get some warranty work done on the caravan. We told you we're going to stay at an old favourite and we're also going to go and stay somewhere new, which we'll show you a little bit later in the episode. Um, but our old favourite is the Neil Turner Wick, which is in Mitchell in Queensland. Um, and it's a great spot. Let's get you to spin the camera around. I was going to drive through the campgrounds, give you a bit of a look. So this is the campgrounds. They run all the way along the weir for I think it's about a kilometre and a half. Um, there's no one here at the moment, only no. because we're out of season, it's January. Yes. What is it at the moment? It's 38 degrees outside according to the car. And I think Alison's phone said it feels like 43, so it's quite warm. <laughs> it's and a bit warm today, yes. There's not many people that are out here, but we come out here um, last April and there, this was full, wasn't it, Al? It was very full. It was very popular with the camp, traveling camping um, community. And one thing that we know from coming out here when it was full is that this was an absolute dust bowl. So if you yes. want to come out here and stay, I'd suggest you make sure the grass looks a little bit greener than what it does when it's the winter starting to set on because there was that many vans in here and that much dust getting kicked up. We didn't even think we were going to stay here, did we? No, no. We moved a bit further down and we found a bit of a greener area. We did, yeah. I'm going to take you down and show you that in a second because we found a fantastic spot. Excuse you, just excuse Alison, she's choking to death here. Um, <laughs> you need to drink of water. Um, I'm going to take you down, give you a look at that. But what I'll do is we'll stop filming now, let Alison get a drink of water, and we'll come back to you very soon. Okay, so there's camping both sides of the toilet block, which is almost central to the campground. There's a fantastic day use area here. I'll just pull into the car park and give you a bit of a look around. Um, all the way along the chained fence that you can see here, you'll find taps spread out at different distances and you can jump in any of those and get some good clean fresh water for your van. Just here, I'll just grab the camera off here. This just tells you about the services that are here in Mitchell. It's also got the donation box here because it is a donation camp and you can also organise to have a bus come pick you up and take you into town if you want to spend a night at the club or the pub. Alright, here's the toilet block. And I've got to say, they're all really clean, aren't they? Very clean. Yeah, we don't come over too much. We try to use our own facilities if we can, and sometimes it's a little bit far for a walk. Um, but yeah, these are always spotlessly clean inside here. There is a little play area here for kids, and I'll show you that. So that's it just over there. And this also gives you direct access down onto the weir. If you want to go swimming, or there's been a lot of people skiing and things over the weekend, it's been really good. It was lovely to see the community come down with their boats and and jet skis and yeah, touch really um, drag the kids behind them everyone's yeah. having a mighty time so here's our spot here we're just on the edge of the green area so you can't camp the other side of the chain but we really like it here don't we we do we do um in summer where we are now we get shade from the tree behind the caravan there from about two o'clock in the afternoon but from seven o'clock in the morning till about two o'clock in the afternoon with sun on the panels all day except today of course because it's um very cloudy a little bit of cloudy yeah all right we'll take them down and we'll show you as you can go and camp a little bit further down and there's also a boat ramp here we'll show you as well so we've come a couple of hundred meters down from where we're camped currently and this is the boat ramp where everyone's been dropping in boats and jet skis yeah, they have, and there's also some more camping here, so I'll go for a bit of a run around, although there's some people here, I don't want to go down and invade no. their space, but... No, but this is an area above the boat ramp where we saw last time a lot of people camping. Yeah, there's nice. heaps of people camped up here. Nice big areas. 
Oh, someone down in that section. Yep. Right. Ah. So let's pull up to the edge over here. I'll get Alison to shoot the camera out. You can see it as you go down the hill here, it flattens out. This is very popular down along here, but just here, right in front of us, there's a flat spot. That's great for caravans right there. You can come down, you can put your van there, set your awning up straight out of the river. And uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful spot. But at the moment, there's a few people down there. We're not gonna go down and, and interrupt their day. No. But uh, yeah, good spot there. But yeah, plenty of spots around. You can have shady, you can have full sun, you can have whatever you like. Hmm, it's very good. So that's an Earl Turner. We, we quite like it, don't we, Al? Yes, we do. It was um, nice and peaceful, uh, not too busy amenities to use, you know, yeah. run into town. So it was really nice. It's been really nice coming back and staying here. It has, yeah. And we're also here too because we're sitting out the cyclone, which has come through a little bit further north. <laughs> um, and we met so many travellers at the moment who have come down this far to escape it. And now we know, because it's now crossed, crossed the coast, I think, two days ago. Yeah. yeah something so, like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little bit too far north of us to affect us. So all we're getting is a lot of hot air, but not much wind. Yes. So, like, yeah. yes, luckily. But, yeah, like everyone, we were watching, moving. Um, but, yeah, not affected, which is good. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to get back this afternoon, go and have a bit of lunch, and then we're going to take you down to the pool and show you that. You come out and you stay at Neil Turner and you've got some kids, make sure you bring them into town because um, they've got some great facilities here in Mitchell, haven't they? They have, certainly have. Typical of a lot of the country areas we've visited. Um, oh, the amenities has been really good. Definitely, and this one in particular, this just seems to be head and shoulders above everybody else. It's got one of the best parks, playgrounds, I think we've ever seen since we've been travelling. Uh, yeah, if you, if you love to climb, or your little one loves to climb, it's a good one. <laughs> That's right. So inevitably you will make your way into town for maybe just a resupply of just some, uh, I don't know, some food or something like that. And you bring the kids into town. There's basketball courts here. There's a skate bowl. There's that fantastic park. There's barbecues. There's memorial gardens. Yes, the memorial garden's actually quite good. I yeah. really enjoyed stopping and, and looking through it. Yeah. And just to walk through Mitchell, it's just a nice little town to walk through. Just there's enough, everything you need here. There's a little little supermarket in the main street there's also one on your way out to the neil turner dam and i'll throw pictures of both in um there's a great pie shop here steve loves the bakery yeah not too bad the waistline doesn't love the bakery but i love no. the bakery yes. um there's a pub here you can come and get some beers or whatever it is that you want and a fantastic meal yes we did we had a meal last time we were here and it was very generous and um very delicious it was yeah really really good and it was good value too wasn't it it was very good value it was <laughs> All right, we'll give you a bit more of a look around Mitchell and then we're going to head down to the free swimming pool. As we've travelled around, we've seen plenty of water towers and silos that have been painted. But I tell you what, this one here in Mitchell is just screaming for a local artist to come out and do a paint job on it. I think it's really just a sign of the times, but um, Mitchell, like so many other towns that we come to in these outback areas, so many shops have closed down or have, you know, had to close down because there's no money in the town. A lot of people move out of town. A lot of people don't stop, they just go straight through. But yeah, just another example of that. It's sad to see, these are beautiful, these old shops. They're really good. We've been to some towns, particularly like Long Longreach and places like that where, you know, there's money still in the town and people come and, um, and stay, but one of the shop owners up here, I'll, I'll give you a look at the sign, you know, they just don't do things by halves out here in the bush, which is, I think is fantastic. Don't break into my shop, you dirty bastards. I know who owns the truck. Leave town as I know who you are. The police are onto you all. Hey, okay, how's that? All right, we're just going to shoot across the street and have a look at the um, Maranoa Gallery. It's free to go and have a look at, but I think it's an old picture theatre. What do you think? It does look like that. It does, doesn't it? You can see where the old ticket box was and where they used to hang the, the coming attractions, I suppose. And We'll go inside and have a bit of a look around. I can't get enough of this sculpture out that we see all over the place, just made of old parts and this one's got hinges and shifters and springs and coils and all sorts of stuff in it. It's even a D-shackle I think that's making up his... it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting extreme close up of that, there you go, look at that. <laughs> oh that's funny, but I tell you what, it's excellent this art.
there's not too much inside, but um, it definitely is the old picture theatre. How cool is this? They've turned it into a gallery and levels and the library for the area. There's one painting on the wall. The streets of Mitchell, just like a lot of towns out west here, are lined with bottle trees. These are really pretty. Maggie sitting up there. <laughs> They are, aren't they? That's what I'm just saying. There's, a, there's so many of these streets that are like this and just lined with bottle trees or other trees for shade and they seem to thrive in areas like this. They do. This is the only pub in town now. There's a few around the street. Some are still open for meals and accommodation but not open as actual pubs. Um, and as I said before, this is the only one that is. It's not a bad pub. We've come here before and had a couple of drinks in the main bar and as we said before, we get a really great meal. Really spewing today. Mitchell has Memorial Pool, which is free. It's not bloody open. It's about 49 degrees. We stopped in at the Great Artesian Spa in Mitchell, which is a fantastic place. We didn't go in today, it was too hot. Here's some fire footage from when we went in, in April, a little bit earlier last year. But we did visit the Information Centre, and geez, I'm glad we did, because they told us that the pool was open from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 6 o'clock every day, and it's free. Didn't shoot any footage while we were in the pool, because the last thing you want to see is this old body rolling around the water. Because Mitchell's an RV friendly town, of course it comes with all the facilities you need if you're a caravaner. Uh, the dump point, which we're just driving up to now, is located at the showgrounds. There's also some toilets here if you need to use those. Um, and you can get fresh water here, but over there at the toilet block. So you go to the toilet block for that. Um, not here at the dump point, obviously. If you're staying out at the Neil Turner, there's toilets out there which are great. You can also, there's probably about, what do you reckon now, maybe four or five water taps out there you can access water. Oh. Yeah, uh, quite a few. Yes, yeah, you're but, right. With yeah. water, with water, yeah, lining up to get some water. <laughs> exactly, but there's no um, there's no dump point out there, so you've got to come into the one that's in town. It's what? What do you reckon? How far? Oh, five minutes. If you're lucky. Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> Just use the pub as your reference. So the pubs you turn off to go out to Neil Turner from the in town, and your pub's also the reference to turn to go down to the showground to get to the dump point. Yes. Yeah. Well, Ali and I left the Neil Turner Weir um, the other day because it was just getting way too hot. And we thought, let's just keep moving back towards the coast because we've got to go back there to get some warranty work done on the van, as we told you at the end of our Burke video. And I'll take you for a bit of walk in the caravan and show you what went wrong um, and what we need to get fixed. It's a simple thing that a lot of people do fix themselves, but I'm in the ballpark of, you know, you spend a hundred plus grand on a caravan and it's under warranty, someone else is going to fix it, not me. So um, I'll take you in and I'll show you what that is. But we've come back to another place that we've stayed at before. This is the Chinchilla Weir, which is a donation camp. It's it's about nine k's out of Chinchilla. It's a great spot. It's a little bit like a caravan park, for want of a better term. Um, they have some great drive-through sites, as you can see here. There's a little bit of been a lot of rain, so there's a few puddles around at the moment, but nothing too serious. Um, but yeah, access to power. I think each one of these um, posts has two outlets on it. So um, just a quick count: there's probably about eight to ten um, powered sites down here. There's some great facilities. There's, if you just have a look over here, that, that shed there has barbecues in it, picnic tables, um, and also an area you can do some washing up. There's no, um, there's no potable water down here. So we filled up with water. You can either get it at the information center in town, but it's very hard to get your caravan in there. So if you go across the street uh, to the cemetery, there's a couple of taps in there you can also access, but you'll need one of those, um, multi handles that you buy from Bunnings because you won't be able to turn the tap on without one. Um, I'll just cut in a picture of the one that we own. That's it. Um, and this fits most taps that we've come across where we haven't been able to access because there's no handle on the tap. But um, yeah, other than that, it's a great spot. Oh, there's also a dump point in Chinchilla, um, which is just over the bridge outside of town. So it's not hard to find, just plug it into your wiki camps and just navigate your way out there. But yeah. As Ali and I drive around, particularly when we go to free camps, um, we do see, unfortunately, a lot of homelessness, or just a lot of people who are down on their luck. Um, but most of those people, you know, they're pretty good. They, um, 
but yeah, they look after themselves. They're just down their luck and they're doing the best that they can. And then we come to places like this. Now, this is absolutely unbelievable. We spoke with some locals. I'm going to turn the camera in a minute. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Um, these people were here for four days. Check this out. This is the rubbish they left. So they weren't here this morning when we woke up. We can only assume that they, they just got up and left in the middle of the night. But this is just total disrespect for the people who come and stay here, for themselves, for the people who have to come and clean this rubbish up. Now, ordinarily, Ali and I would um, give that a quick clean up, and we did in our Burke video. So in our Burke video, we showed you a little bit of rubbish that we found down by uh, May's bin. Just before we left, we picked that up, we got rid of it and throw it all into the bins. But this stuff here, I'm not touching that. There's uh, medical waste, there's all sorts of gear there. So. Um, the best I can do is I've taken a couple of photos. When we go into the information centre today to pay our donation for this camp, then I'm going to um, just let them know, show them the photos, and just see if they can organise the council or someone to come down and clean it up. But just because you're down on your luck doesn't mean you have to live like an absolute feral. I'll show you the barbecue area. So we're just coming up onto here. It's a little bit of a mess because I just showed you some footage earlier, the mess that was left by um, some people, the same people are in here, so... It does need to be cleaned up, but yeah, there's a couple of barbecues here, sinks and um, things that you can do your washing up. Good seating area. Just some more rubbish left by those people that were here before. And just a great view out over the weir. You have to excuse all the cockies at the moment. They're going, uh, they're going crazy. It must be because of all the water that's down here at the moment, but uh, yeah, they haven't stopped for about uh, two days. So anyway, I'm gonna keep monitoring the dam or keep monitoring the weir and uh, Alice is gonna keep working in the van for a little while. We'll catch up with you a little bit later on. Well, you might have guessed by now, we're pretty much up to date with where we are in our videos. We might be just a couple of weeks behind, so you'd all be very familiar with the big rain that come down and hit the southeast corner of Queensland and the floods that that's caused and all the roads have been cut off. Um, as I said before, we're sitting in chill at the moment. We need to stay here another day because we just can't get down to Dalby because all the roads of all the Warrego Highway has been cut. But we just spoke to one of the locals here who said the weir does flood. When we arrived here the other day, um, we went down, we had a look at the weir and it was a good metre below the weir wall, but at the moment it's a raging torrent, and I'll cut in some footage of what it looks like at the moment, because it's absolutely pouring over the weir. But she did say that it floods here. So what I've done is I've just come down, and I've put a stick here by the bank, and I'll, I'll come and monitor that throughout the course of the day, because she did say that when it does reach the level of the bank where we are now, um, it just floods out here very, very quickly. But she also did say that the police would come down and... Um, just let us know and that they're going to close it all off and, and move us out. So we'll just see how we go. But at the moment, we're a little bit stuck for places to go. We might end up at the showground if it gets too bad down here. But anyway, we'll just see what happens. So Steve, where are we off to? Uh, we're going to a free camp on the other side of Chinchilla. And why are we going to a different free camp? Well, to the free camp? Because it looks like the dam's going to flood. <laughs> or the weir anyway. It's the weir, yeah. So we've been at the Chinchilla Weir and um, when we arrived, it, there was no water flowing over the weir wall um, and yesterday it was suddenly flowing at great knots and when we went down to have a look it's up near the road now so yeah. it's probably not where we were camping that concerned us too much it was more um, the impact that will occur with the roads I think. Yeah it looks like all the roads around us are going to flood mm -hmm. um, so we'll get up onto some higher ground. We actually want the locals coming down a bit earlier today and he said, mate, pack up your gear and go. Yes, so. the locals have been pretty good. We've had a few, um, oh, here's a sign to Dolby, is delays. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just typical of the wet weather that's through. You're just going to be careful of what you're doing, where you're going and um, where you're staying and mindful of the conditions that's happening around you. They change fairly quickly. So, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll drop in some footage of the weir with no water coming over the wall, then I'll drop mm -hmm. in some footage of about 36 hours later. Yes, and thank you to the residents of Chinchilla. They came down and as they passed by, they kept us updated with their thoughts and ideas of what we should be doing and, and keeping our eye out. So, lovely community uh, looking after us. So we came to the Rotary Round Waterhole. Uh, it's the free camp outside of Chinchilla. Um, we had a little welcoming committee, always lovely. You can certainly see there's been some water in the area and we could see it on the, on the sides of the roads coming in. And there's the van over here and the safest spot we can find. So we'll stay here the night and probably head back towards Brisbane tomorrow.
Well, here we are. We're back in Brisbane. We're only staying for a few days just to get the warranty work done on the caravan. But I did say that I'd share with you what the problem was. When we went up to Cape York and we're driving over the corrugated roads up there, we had a number of screws come loose in the caravan. But we spoke to plenty of other caravan owners up there across a wide variety of vans, even some vans we didn't think it had happened into. And everybody has problems with loose screws. And the easiest way to fix them, obviously, is that when you put them back in, just put a bit of Loctite on them, screw them back up, and they won't come back on you again. And we found that worked really well around the windows. But with the drawers inside our caravan, didn't work as well. You have to excuse me for a second, I'm just boiling the kettle. Right, I'll just turn that off. All right, so I'll show you what happened to ours. So if you have a look just down here, you can see that these drawers are out of alignment. It was actually worse than this. I've had to do a little bit of a patch up job myself to get it fixed, but they're just very hard to open and they just don't slide well. And they do come undone when you're driving around. The same with this one here. Um, and it's because they use these little tiny screws in your caravan, which causes them to pop out. You think by now, all the manufacturers would have learnt through the, I suppose, the warranty claims and complaints they get to use a bigger screw or broaden up a little bit. So I put a claim into um, Marvel. They said it'll take a little while because it has to be approved through the factory. And it did. It took um, probably about six weeks. But eventually we got an email. And when we got the email from Marvel to say it's all been approved, go to your repair. We rung up our repair, which is R&R &R Refinish in Clontarf. So if you're in the Redcliffe region or north of Brisbane and you want a good repair, we've used these guys for all our caravan services and they've been really good in their after sales or their after service service has been second to none. If we've had any sort of problem, question, whatever, just ring them up, speak to the guys, they get us back on track really, really quick. So they're great to deal with. So we thought, let's try and keep with a company that we know and we trust. Um, we got them to quote us, very, very reasonable on the quote. Um, of course, it's going to be picked up through warranty. Um, but yeah, so we booked in with them. They said, us, look, we can get you in on this date, which was the 8th of February, um, if you can get your van back. And at the time we're in Burke, we thought, you yeah, bugger it, we're coming straight back. We'll get this fixed. That way we can get back on the road and just stay on the road and put this issue behind us. But I am a firm believer, and I know a lot of people do fix this themselves, but I am a firm believer in, you know, like, we paid over 100 grand for this caravan and while it's under warranty i'm not putting anything on it so um, it can be fixed while it's under warranty and we'll get all these little issues nailed and we'll show you when we're coming around to our second anniversary because we've got a two-year warranty on the van we'll go and get someone to professionally check it for us look at anything else that needs to be fixed while it's still under warranty get those things fixed before we move on anyway down at r and &R, i'll give you a bit of a look down there and i'll show you what the repair looks like when they've finished it and i'll show you the main problems that we had once all the drawers are out okay so i'm just about to shoot down to r and r to get the warranty work done but i told you i've emptied out the drawers now so it's a bit easier for you to see what's wrong but if you have a look here i'll just take this drawer forward and take it out up in here you see a screw there and they go along all the sides they're all really small you can see this one here started to come away and the other thing if you have a look in here you can see this this piece of uh, board which has been cut out on their CNC. It's actually a gap between the shower wall and the board. And what happens is that when the drawer rolls backwards and forth inside, I don't know if it'll do it because there's no weight in here at the moment, but this actually moves, which causes this back roll to drop out. So I'm going to ask them today when they do the warranty work if they'll put something in here to brace that up so it doesn't happen anymore because I think that's a major contributing factor to the problems that we're having. But... Um, yeah, as I said before, it's certainly something that needs to be fixed and we'll get that sorted and um, hopefully we won't have any problems with the drawers again. But anyway, I'll let you know. Well, back from R&R &R refinishing, the boys have done a fantastic job down there again. The drawers are looking a thousand percent better. So the alignment is much better than what it was. They've gone along, they've made an adjustment to every single door, cupboard, everything inside of the van and they've done a great job. Everything works absolutely perfectly. I'll just pull a drawer out and I'll show you where they put in some bracing to try and stop that flexing or that bowing in the timber that I showed you before. Okay, so I'm hoping there's enough light in here, but you can see they've added this bit of um, beading in here and they just brace that in against the shower wall. And what it's done is it's stopped that from bowing out and the drawer just runs perfectly in and out now. Locks first time every time, no problems whatsoever. I did mention it to Marvel, um, just to show them there was a, looked like a flaw in the design to me, and they love that sort of feedback. So if you're a Marvel owner and you want to give them a bit of feedback, something they might be able to work on anyway, you could probably do that. And I probably need to mention, we've got nothing to do with R&R &R professionally or commercially or any of those sorts of things. They're just a great little local business here in uh, Clontarf, which is just on the Redcliffe Peninsula, north of Brisbane. They do a fantastic job, but you've got to book in early because it's very rare to get yourself a spot inside a month to six weeks but yeah give them a go because they're really good they also do a um 
I'm almost 100% sure they do a way service down there as well, so they'll weigh all your rig for you. Okay. That's the end of this week's episode. Ali and I really hope that you enjoyed it. I know at the start we said we we're going to stay somewhere old and go somewhere new, but because of the rain delays and getting the van in for the service and um, all the warranty work we had to get done, we just didn't get to someplace new on this episode. But because we're back here in Brisbane, we're going to take advantage of some good weather and we're going to go somewhere that we've really looked forward to taking in the van for a long, long time now. We didn't think we'd get the opportunity, but we got it now, so we're going to go and do that. Why don't you come and join us next week? We're going to run a bit of a special episode. We're going to talk about our, uh, our car and our caravan and all the things that we think are essential to making your life on the road. Just a little bit more pleasurable and um, just really easy to do. So come and join us next week. We hope you have a great week. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate all the support we've got. In fact, we still can't believe how much we've um, gained in the channel in the last couple of weeks. It's been absolutely fantastic, and that's all because of your support. So thank you very much. We'll see you next Saturday at 9 o'clock. Have a good week. Bye-bye.